Last year in 2023 it was all about large language models. This year I believe it will be more about small language models. Small language models or SLMs are popping up everywhere. Small language models are primarily just smaller versions of these large language models. And we know that large language models are routinely of massive size and resource requirements have really limited them to the large corporations or the people with beefy systems even in my few videos you might have seen that uh, i failed to install the model in full because of its size and the limited nature of my gpu's vram even when i have 16 gb of vram there are some models of 13 billion of size or even 7 billion of size which fail to run sometime even i'm unable to run the quantized versions of some models that is where i think slms are going to change the whole game these models have fewer parameters these models range from a few million to a few billion parameters compared to LLMs with hundreds of billions or even trillions of parameters these slms that is why require less compute and memory making them suitable for deployment on smaller devices or even edge computing scenarios so i think when it is time for them to shine on the edge devices it means that they will be embedded in our mobile devices like uh, our phones smartphones and tablets and so on and so forth also uh, once that happens there will be more and more developers and companies and even individuals who are going to use these slms for their own applications SLMs are also easier to fine tune for specific domains and tasks because they are smaller in size and you can do them quickly and easily. Now how you can create the SLMs? Well, just because they are small in size doesn't mean that they are not trained on huge data set. They are still trained on huge training data set. It could be data set of text, code or even images. But there are few techniques which you can use in order to create an SLM. For example, you can do knowledge distillation. What it means is to transfer knowledge from a pre-trained LLM to a smaller model, capturing its core capabilities without the full complexity. Another technique is quantization and I have shown a lot of videos on my channel around that. These techniques remove unnecessary parts of the model and reduce the precision of its weights and then further reduces its size and resource requirements and this is my favorite method by the way then you can have other architectures too for example there are architectures available state space and few others where you can focus on optimizing the performance and efficiency while keeping the size down now that is all good and rosy but there are few limitations and there are, of course there are some advantages too now, when we say advantages, then one of the benefit of SLM is their capability to process data locally, making them particularly valuable for edge devices and mobile devices. So you can have your own private small model, you know, locally hosted without any interface to the internet, ensuring you the security and privacy. Now, just because you have SLM trained on data set with fewer weights, it means that it will never be able to compete with LLM's power. For example, if you have a trillion parameter LLM and if you have created a quantized version of it, it is not really possible to compare both of these. There will still be a trade-off. Now, there are already various SLM's in the market. One of the most popular and older one or a pioneer one is Distal BERT, which is a more compact, agile and lightweight iteration of BERT. Then we have Orca 2, which was developed by Microsoft. And Orca was developed by fine-tuning Meta's Llama 2 using high-quality synthetic data. Then we have Fire 2, again Microsoft. It is a transformer-based SLM, which is engineered for efficiency and adaptability in both cloud and edge deployment. And it is quite promising. I also have done an installation videos on all of these. Then we have BERT Mini, small, medium and tiny, which is primarily 
uh, from Google and it is available in scaled down version. For example, mini, Burt mini is just 4.4 million parameter, whereas medium is 41 par parameter million model. Okay, and then we have GPT new GPT J, which are primarily scaled down iterations of OpenAI's GPT models. Then we have something called as mobile Burt, which is tailored for mobile devices. And then another um, famous one is T5 small, which is Google's text to text transfer transformer or T5 model series. And if you're looking for a very lightweight, just experimental one, I think T5, T5 really creates a good balance between performance and resource utilization, especially if you're focused on text processing. Now, as I said, I think next year it is going to be a significant shift in the landscape of AI when more and more SLMs will be in the market and you will see these SLMs getting embedded seamlessly in your devices and you will be able to easily run them side by side on your system and computer as your companion, assistant or maybe just running in the background doing the tasks. That's it guys. Let me know how do you think this is going to shape the future of AI especially in the short term in this year and please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, please share it among your network. Highly appreciate you being there. Thank you very much.